Well, they are indeed, and there's a Nyala behind us that they seem like they've spotted. So I think we're off to go and see if they're going to go and hunt it. And then indeed we are. As you can see, everybody's up and now trotting. And so from lying down sleeping, we're now in a situation where I think Nyala is about to have a very, very bad day. And this whole pack is now moving towards where they're going. So hopefully we'll see them starting to hunt and starting to get going it looks like they're kind of getting up and ready to move whether or not they actually will is anyone's guess now I'm just gonna try and open the path a little bit for another vehicle that's also joining us just to see so that they can also see what goes on but you can see they've kind of moved a little bit and then they've stopped the Nyala was just on the other side I think the Nyala has been clever and has run into Chitwa Lodge itself and has kind of gone to try and sort of seek shelter in that area well if I was a Nyala would do the exact same, I must be honest. Now this is pretty cool, look here, there's a crow chasing a bird of prey as well above us. There we go, so there's, looks like a Wahlberg's eagle being chased by a crow, which is not every day you're going to see that. You can see the crow is pushing it away, it knows that the Wahlberg's is a bird of prey that hunts other birds and so the crow is dismissing it because the crow is busy nesting on the tower that is at Chitwa Lodge, so that's why it's getting a little bit of a hard time. But the dogs look like they might start settling again. I think maybe it was just a temporary kind of waking up. They might have spotted that Nyala, kind of thought about it, and now it's all time to kind of rest. But what I want to try and do is just try and get Viam into a slightly better angle with the sun, because at the moment, the kind of light is very harsh from our right-hand side, and it makes a lot of shadows. So I want to just try and quickly come around this way, and this should help Viam a little bit. And we should have the sun then over our right shoulder, and the dogs looking directly into the light, which will be absolutely beautiful. But I think they're going to settle down again. I don't think they're going to go too far. There we go. Everybody's starting to lie down and take it easy. So it was just a short, brief little kind of movement, and now everybody is settling and is slowly but surely just trying to finding a place to lie down. It's still quite cool this morning, and so I think maybe settling... Oh no, apparently not. Apparently some of them want to move. You can see half the pack is down and sleeping and the other half is up and moving. And so you might find what happens is they're just looking for a bit of shade and they might lie down there. Although what I was saying is that it's cool this morning. And so I, if I was a dog, I would also be lying in the sunshine as well at the moment. Because lying in the sun is at least a little bit warmer than in this cold kind of shade. Now that we're in the shade itself, it actually feels a little bit more chilly. So... Hopefully they'll all settle down again. It'll be nice if they do settle because it means they'll still be around this afternoon. Michael, you're asking, has there been any research on the genetic diversity of the Kruger packs in, and, and you know, what was the outcome of it? So Michael, at the moment with this, um, rabies and canine distemper they are taking a dna sample of all of these wild dogs and and they're working out slowly but surely what exactly is going on look there's a wild dog chasing a dwarf mongoose inside the termite mound the little dwarf mongoose is running you can actually hear them alarm calling <laughs> the dog chased it inside there everybody else is fairly relaxed and lying down but i think that dwarf mongoose was just too kind of interesting for that dog not to go and chase but they're busy doing all the dna testing on them at the moment and working out exactly what's going on with the dna so at at, at this stage there's no sort of sign of of any results as to how closely related or what the kind of genetic variation is amongst them but you never know it's it's going to be out soon and, and hopefully we'll get a better understanding of exactly what these dogs are and how they're related but you can hear they're starting to sneeze now. Now, this is a thing that we've been discussing recently. There we go. There's a little sneeze from one of the dogs. And that they sneeze when they're starting to move. And it's almost like a voting system as to how they get to move. So everyone will have a little sneeze. And that's kind of like their vote. And that then indicates if it's a time to move, is it time to settle, is it time to lie down. Which is super interesting. It's a really kind of a cool thing to do. Now, they are on their way towards Chitwood Airstrip. So I want to try and keep up with them. Because if they're on the Airstrip itself, it's going to be really quite beautiful i don't know if we'll get all the way there they might lie down before we do but let's have a look and hopefully they will get towards where they need to go now this is exactly the same area that we had hosana tumba 
and Tingana, it's all in the exact same place. And so I wonder if maybe they're just kind of looking around and scenting. So you'll find that there's a little bit of rubble here. And this is just from where Chitwa has been doing some renovations. So they clear this out every now and then. But it's just that they've got to put it somewhere while they're busy with their renovations. And once they're done with the renovations, then they just come in when everything is done. But it looks like they're going to head towards the airstrip. I think let's go around, Vim. It's going to be much easier when we, if we go around and catch them on the other side because they are kind of going through a difficult patch to, to negotiate, that's for sure. All right, let's go through here. This looks fairly open. There we go. There should be a little path that takes us through. Linda, the population of dogs is shrinking for two reasons. One, naturally they have a very high mortality rate, so unfortunately because of other predators out there, dogs, a lot of them do die, but the probably the single biggest reason is people. Now, not because we hunt them, not because we chase them, not because we, you know, domesticate them, but because we live very close to where they are and we've taken over massive tracts of habitat, and also because we have domestic animals that do have distemper and rabies and these kind of things. And because dogs are such social animals, if they get distemper or rabies, they pretty much their entire genetic Kind of, well, I mean, their entire pack will get it because of how closely they bond with one another and how they kind of treat each other. Like I say, the entire pack ends up getting it and all kind of passing it on to one another and it becomes a big problem. So it's not good for the dogs when they get these things. It, it literally destroys the entire sort of pack, like I say, and you get a big loss in the population very, very quickly. I think they are hopefully going to settle in this particular area. It would be nice if they do. Now, it can't be the Sands Pack because earlier I was saying I need them to stand up, but it can't be the Sands Pack because the Sands Pack, currently the secondary female, or beta female, has had little puppies, and they're still quite den-bound at the moment. And these guys are most certainly the rest of the Investec Pack. I can at least see them all now. So and the rest of the Investecs are all here as well, which is cool. And I wonder where the other five have disappeared to. I mean, it was about a week ago, maybe just over a week since we last saw um, those five. And, and hopefully these guys will eventually catch up with the five and we'll be able to kind of rejoin. Unless they've decided to split completely, which does happen with dogs. Dogs do split from time to time and end up in situations where they're kind of in different groupings. The problem is, is that we are going to probably lose these dogs fairly shortly. Where we're going now, one, I don't have signal, and two, the density of the bush is just ridiculous. So to follow wild dogs through here is almost impossible. So this is going to be our probably our best view of them trotting past us on the airstrip. We're going to try and keep up with them, but I doubt it's going to be possible. They, like I say, move too quickly, and in thickets like what we're just going into, it's going to be almost impossible to keep up with them. Off they go into that area. Umka, so if a wild dog is injured, and they probably won't help it. Um, even if it's due to natural causes. So if it's a human related thing, then yes, they do help it, but natural causes, no. And the reason why is because wild dogs, typically most packs carry an injury at some point and a, a limp or something like that. It's just the nature of wild dogs. They fight with all kinds of things like hyenas. They chase a lot of animals. And so they end up in a situation where they unfortunately do carry a lot of natural injuries. And so even though they're endangered, it's part of the natural system. It's just a way that life is. And Unfortunately, that's how it works. So they don't actually treat the dogs for any natural kind of things. It's only if it's human intervention do they get treated. But that's here in South Africa and other parts of the world. It might be a bit different, but here in South Africa, that's how they kind of treat it. Now, this is going to be a rough ride as we try and negotiate this thicket. It's really not going to be very easy. It gets super dense inside here. This little section now, while we kind of push towards the next road is not too bad, but after this, it becomes an absolute nightmare. And I, sorry, there's a Stienbock here. So Viem has seen a Stienbock and the dogs have just walked right past it without even knowing it. So there the dogs are going. And you can see what I mean about it starting to get thick. There's a lot of branches. To even spot the dogs in this is quite difficult. So it's gonna be a tough little process, but hopefully they'll end up settling somewhere and we can just try and keep up with them while they go through the thicket. This dog is sniffing around and the Stienbock is still behind us.
So it's just behind us here. I wonder if this dog might spot it once it comes around. And this is what they do when they're hunting. They spread out and they flush animals effectively. And once they flush something, then they give chase and the rest of the, the pack will come and chase behind them. Now, even though they have blood, they still are not hugely full and they could do with another kill. And so maybe that's why they're looking around. But I'm gonna try and just get ahead of this particular, wait, hold on. This dog looks like it's spotted. There we go. You see that dogs have spotted the steenbok. I'm gonna try and just turn around quickly because it seems like they are chasing it but the problem is, is that you've got to be careful of trees and all kinds of other things so we're just trying to get around and see if we can keep up with them did you see which way they went Vim? S towards the airstrip so we can just try and get around here and see if I can keep up with them the thing with dogs is that you tend to punish cars and poor Rusty has just come out of the sick bay and is now getting following wild dogs so Rusty unfortunately I'm sorry I do apologize about this already but let's try and just get back to where the dogs were running in case they chase the steenbok down I'm just trying to scan to see where they would have gone But I think they might have missed and just stopped. But one dog definitely set off after that steenbok. I don't know about the other dog. Oh, I've lost them now. Where did they go? I thought they might have run into this area, but no. I don't know where they've gone. This is typical of wild dogs too, is that they just all of a sudden grow wings and fly when they chase things it's very difficult because they move so fast it's tough to kind of keep up with them and actually sort of see where they've gone I'm just gonna go back towards the airstrip in case they've come out since I've been gone although there's a water buck looking down this direction this is a little baby water buck now that's definite food for a wild dog if wild dogs spot that little baby they're going to be after it in a second you can see the water buck are trying to get away but but that is exactly what wild dogs are looking for. They love baby waterbuck. I've seen many a baby waterbuck being chased in this area by the dogs and successfully hunted. So that's what they're looking for. But I just want to check here because they were looking in this direction. So I wonder if maybe some of the dogs didn't pop out. There's a Nyala, so we don't have to worry about that side. The nice thing about wild dogs is if you see another animal, you know it's not there. It's not like a leopard or a lion where they could be stalking. These guys, because of their sort of hunting technique, there will be no antelope standing still if they are anywhere close by so it's just about kind of trying to there they are which way did they go VM right so I'm just trying to see and we're here now we just saw one brief trot past us so hopefully we'll find them and I believe a lot of you are rooting for us to find them there we go there they are so we're just gonna try and keep up with them there's one at least dogs could you not have chased things on the airstrip rather that would have been much easier for us there they go I can see most of the pack now I don't think they've caught anything. It looks like it's just a greeting. Although they've kind of got their tails in the air, which sometimes is if no, just a greeting process. So everybody's just coming back together. They're just working out where everyone is. After doing a little chase, they kind of get themselves back into sort of alignment and get everyone together and then back off they go again but how cool is this there's nothing better than wild dogs because you never know like i was saying earlier it just goes from relax to chaos in two seconds so you don't have the situation when they sit still for very long and now you can see we're often trotting again and to keep up with them is going now cheryl sorry I, if you can just repeat that I'm just trying to get through here. Cheryl, I think you said how fast can they run? Is that is that what the question was, Megan? So wild dogs will reach a top speed of about seven kilometers. Again, so they're after something. They're chasing a Nyala, baby Nyala. He's just gonna try and keep up with them. It's gonna be quite tough. Sorry, VM. Let's try and just get around here. So we're gonna try and keep up. 
keep up. They're chasing, but it's so thick in here, it's going to be very difficult. Let's just see if we can get through this. Sorry, VM. Now, unfortunately, with wild dogs, they seem to have missed again because they're back. But there was a young Nyala that they were busy chasing after, and they were right behind it at one point, and obviously it just managed to get away. And so everybody's now them back towards this area and this is what they do is they just walk and trot and they eventually flush something and then everybody tries to kind of join each other and try and kind of then get back together and hopefully one member will be able to be successful and grab something can you still see them they're going that way again yep all right let's try and get through this now it's always one thing when you're plowing off at first the adrenaline pumps and you get through but it's then once you realize where you've actually gotten yourself, it's not ideal. So <laughs> try and just keep up with these guys. Just keep up with these guys. I'm sorry, Rusty. I know. I know. I believe Brent is still forging ahead with his birdless 